Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22. We, we'll be fine for the chickens, we, we will be fine. We'll, we'll have plenty to feed them and so on, and then the next person that buys the farm from us is kind of their issue after that, isn't it? Like, it's, it's not our problem. We don't have to cater to everything that they might want to do for the next few years. Right, we we're under no obligation to do that. So we are going to have plenty of grain for the chickens for the duration of the time we're planning to stay on this farm. I'm hoping that by late winter we'll be in a position where we're looking to sell this farm and move on to a new location. So if we're aiming to do this by late winter, it's difficult for me to see what's going on. I can't really look at it from that way. I can look at it from this way. This does work. Just, it's in the shadow on this side of the combine, so it doesn't look as good. And I like to be able to admire, I like to be able to admire the machine that I'm driving. We won't worry about it. We got uh, one and a half more times to get round the field. We're on 2,100 in the tank. And then we can come rushing back over and empty it out again. Each time you go in a little bit, you get a little bit further around the field. I can't remember. Someone said that if you, like, twice around the outside edge of a field, it's like a certain amount, uh, that is a certain percentage of a field that you can get. Um, I don't, it's, it's not an exact science, it's like a, a, a rough thing, like, um, doing the, doing a proper wide headland strip all the way around the field, and you're looking at something like 25% of the field already being covered. Now, can I reverse up that slope in order to turn round? Fortunately, I haven't got a massive weight in that trailer, but he still slid. Did you see those back tyres? They still slid slightly as we started to as we braked and then started to come back down the hill we do need to be careful on these hills here you, you definitely got to be a little bit careful on the hills <laughs> like that right there it's not <laughs> the way to go and do things so i'm going to stop there and i'm going to put that one out and knock the tractor over that is also not <laughs> not the way i'm really bad at this I'm really bad at looking after my machinery. Although, to be honest, there is no way that you would be able to do that with this combine auger here. I'm pretty sure, actually, that that auger is not hydraulically driven at all. I think that's a hand-operated one. You do get hand-operated ones. So, we'll, we'll let's just start this up a minute. I'll move forward out of the way like that and then we'll put it back yes that is a hand operated one yeah you wouldn't be knocking the tractor over sideways with that one you just wouldn't be able you might break the window on the tractor that would be about the full extent of what you'd be able to do you wouldn't be able to do anything more than that because you, you're pulling that thing out by hand and that's it. There's no no extra assistance on it. I think that little strut down the bottom on the side is actually just a strut, like, helping to hold it in place. I don't think there's anything extra. I did wonder if maybe it was, like, something to help push it out. I don't think it is. It's just to, to help hold it there. So you would take hold of... Yes, you maybe take hold of that cable on the top to pull the auger out. I guess I've seen these operated and I do remember when I was very very young my dad had one it wasn't one of these it was a, a Massey Ferguson one but it looked very similar to this um, but I don't remember very much in the way of details of the machine so I don't remember anything about what would have been involved with the auger coming out or anything like that so all of that is pure guesswork for me because I've never actually seen it happening myself and I don't recall what it was like so although technically I've seen it I haven't really seen it to 
know anything about it. But also, there's the... Um, I've never actually gone and watched any videos of these old ones being used or anything like that on YouTube. Or not enough to see, like, the orders coming out and so on. I know that a lot of them, the auger would have been put out into the out position and then it would have just, like, you'd probably have the auger in to do the outside round on the field. Uh, but then you'd put the auger out and it would stay like that for the duration of the um, harvesting of that field. And then you'd, put the, you'd fold the auger in when you wanted to move fields. Um... So I'm guessing that would sort of mostly be the case. It's not something that we'd put... It, like we do in the game here, we're constantly putting this thing in and out. But I, I'm guessing in real life on a combine like this, you wouldn't be doing that. Like, it, because it looks like it would be quite a difficult thing to go and do to move that in and out there. And latch it all into place and so on. Especially with that little handle right there that's locking it in place. You definitely, that looks like it's got a bolt on the end of it. Um, it's definitely a hand-operated thing, rather than something that is assisted by any kind of hydraulic ram. Which means that you wouldn't be looking to try and do this by hand. Uh, yeah, not by hand. You wouldn't be looking to try and do this too frequently. Like, it, it would just be a, a one-off situation, and you would leave it right where it was. What am I going to hit out here in the middle of the field? Uh, the outside round, yes, there's a few trees, stuff overhanging the, the side of the field. But once you get into the middle of the field, you've got nothing to hit, so you wouldn't be doing that, would you? Now, we do need to slow down a little bit. We're almost full. It's very easy to forget how quickly this thing can fill up. With only 2,500 litres, it doesn't take long. We're going to fit it all the way to the very brim. There we go. We did almost a full round of the field this time. There we go, look at that. Right. Completely full. Reverse back up again, and... I don't like driving with the auger out. Yeah, that definitely feels like it's something that is a bit more difficult. So we've got 5,000 litres here. I'm going to have to go and empty this out. So I'm going to take it down. We'll, we'll unload from the combine now. And then we'll take it down to the chicken shed and we will tip the seven and a half thousand litres into the chicken shed. And then we'll come back up so that we can do the final round around the outside edge of the field. Once we've done that, then we'll see about the buying of the chickens. Actually, do I need to do another time around the field? Let's have a look. back a bit. He's, he's dancing his way down the hill. Uh, yes, I think I will do the final time around the field. But I've got a bit of an idea, so we're not going to empty out that trailer just yet. We'll keep on going. Like this. We've got a little bit of an idea that will help us a bit just to keep everything going smoothly. We're going to start at the top edge of the field. That's where we're going to start the hired help. And then once we've done kind of the top half of the field, um, as soon as it starts deciding that it doesn't know which way is up, uh, we will bring the combine back down here and start working on the bottom edge of the field down here. I'm just trying to straighten up that edge line along there. Cause it's looking quite crooked at the moment. So we just want to tidy that in a little bit. Just because, you know, it, it, it looks messy otherwise, and we don't want that. We don't want people thinking that we don't know what we're doing. Right? We're, we're, we're trying to maintain an aura of professionalism about this. Even if it is just an aura and there isn't actually any professionalism involved, we do want to try and make it look like we're being professional. If we can at least make it look like it, then, you know, people might trust us to do things. I'm quite sure why have to be mad but still and what I was going to do here is we won't like just the very edge of the field up over there I won't worry about doing an extra pass so all I need to do is get up there this is the difficult bit it's climbing up this hill right here at least 
we get to gaze in awe at the wonderful combine and the very handsome chap who is driving the combine. I mean, look at him. He's, he's absolutely dashing, although quite why he's wearing a wool-lined bomber jacket on a day like today, I don't really know. So not only is he dashingly handsome, um, he's well on his way to becoming an eccentric millionaire. He's got the eccentric bit down to a T. Eccentric is just a word for mad. You can't be poor people are mad. Rich people are eccentric. Right? There's a big difference between the two. You own you can only be classed as eccentric if you have a pile of money. So we'd like to be an eccentric millionaire. We're halfway there, all we need now is the money. And that bomber jacket in the middle of summer is proof that we are halfway to being the eccentric millionaire. All we need is the millions. That might be a little bit harder to come by than the eccentricity. Sure of it. Although, I've, you know, I've, I've got faith in our abilities. I reckon that we could probably do it one day. We won't be doing it in this series, but maybe we can do it in the Calm Land series. Maybe we can actually get to 1 million euros in total. That would be pretty cool if we can achieve that kind of goal. And I've got almost a full tank of grain coming up here. This, this is where I wanted to start using the hired help. It was just on this bit. But to be honest, I'm not sure if I'm going to get all the way to where I wanted to go, which is kind of like this bit right here. So what I'm in fact going to do my amazing plan was that we would get to this point and then put 500 litres into that trailer and then we would, you know, stop and that would be it. But that plan... Pull a little bit more. There we go. Right. Now I need to reverse up here a bit. The plan is not necessarily quite as good as I thought because I've completely filled up my combine I didn't really want to set the hide help going just then uh, let's reverse around that way a little tiny bit we'll put that one out we'll go and get the tractor all right I can take 500 liters out of the combine uh, this is painful I gotta get, you know what, we're, we're just gonna run this straight down and we'll tip this out and then we will come back, empty the combine out completely and then we can see about buying chickens. And that's why you don't break going down a steep hill. But we've already done that previously. So we've got this great big steep bit right here. Uh, why don't I have a tip option here? Ah, now I do. There. That's what I'm looking for, is a tip option. So food will go in there. I don't know how much food will go in there. The difficult bit is going to be later on trying to put the food in when the eggs are here, right in the way. That is going to be a little bit more tricky to deal with. But let's not worry about that for a minute. I want to bring this back up around this way. We've got eight thousand, uh, seven and a half thousand litres of grain in there, which is more than enough. Uh, the water, we don't actually need to take that to them. The, um, the bigger houses, they are now actually able to have water piped into them. Finally... Farming Simulator has realized that the modern farmer is able to use piped water. Uh, up until this point, the creators of Farming Simulator thought that farmers didn't know that you could lay pipes in underground to put water in for your animals and, and for ev everything else that you might want it for, and so you had to take it around manually for everything, which just seemed to me to be slightly ridiculous, but that's just that's just how it was, so let's, let's not worry about it too much. Uh, you unload there, and then once we've unloaded this, we will go and just change things around a little bit. I've got an idea for this. 
well, not change things around. We're just going to bring it back over there, and we're going to start the hired help working here. So it's not really a you know a brainwave or anything like that. There we go. Right, that one will go back there, and put that back down that way. And then this one comes over here like this. Back it up a little bit further. There, started up. I did wonder about using the mod that you know does the the straw um, thing. The straw goes back through the combine again if, if you go over a windrow. But I decided I didn't want to do that. Right, hired help is on its way. Can that combine turn round with the tractor being where it is? This is what we will find out. I've seen this combine trying to turn round before, and it can do some very, very weird things. Ah, it's not going to do overly weird today. It might when it goes back over again. Let's just see what happens now. Is it, we'll, we'll, we'll let him to... Yeah, in your own time, dude. You take as long as you need. Don't let us rush you. Don't let us, don't let us think that, you know, don't, 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 don't let us make you feel rushed. Don't feel, you know, don't let, don't let us make you feel like you, you, you're under any kind of pressure there. You take all the time that you need. All right, he seems to be turning okay there. Brought it all the way back out. That nice little sort of clicking noise is going on in the combine. And he brings it back around that way. It's just the overall engine noise a little bit deafening when you put the game sounds all the way... Well, it's not all the way up. It's it's back to how I had it set previously so that I had, you know, I could hear the, the track sounds quite nicely. But this one does seem a little tiny bit excessive. All right. Let's leave that one there for a minute, and I want to jump down to this one now, and then we will come over here. So if I look in this bit a minute, and I go to the animals, chicken coop is not going to tell me how much I've got in there. It says 7,500 there, but what it doesn't do... Can we go in? Oh, we can. Nice. What it doesn't do... Can I go in there? Apparently I can't go into that bit is tell us how many chickens we can go and... Oh, well, actually, it will from here. 360 chickens we can have. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go... Well, we, we want a rooster. Press escape to go back, and I want to go there. I want to buy a rooster, so I'll buy that one. Yes. Okay. Then I'm going to go to chicken. Uh, I'm going to take this one up to... Is 25, 30, 30. I go 49 chickens and I'll buy that. And then 50 now. We'll do this in 50s. So that will go up in 50s. So I want to buy. Uh, yep. Why is it keep going back to the. Oh, it's because it's over that side, I think looking at that one. So you've got to double click and then buy. And do that again. And it's 2,750 for each lot. So I got 250 chickens here. That's actually quite a lot of chickens. So I think I don't think we're going to buy any more chickens than that because I'm a little bit cautious about Oh, right, we can't have very much more, and already 26 litres of grain has just dropped down with those chickens that we've got. Now, these chickens are already producing eggs, and we've got 10% productivity, so we've already sort of started work on this. And it's literally, although that 26 litres is because we've just gone past 9 o'clock, and it'll be every hour. I'm not going to get any more than that, though. I think, I think 250 chickens is about right start us off with um yeah 
They will breed themselves, and so they'll dump in the extra lot of chickens in a few months' time. But we're not going to worry about that just for a minute. We'll leave that one going. You have travelled all the way down to the very end down there, and you're doing that. You're actually doing a reasonable job. I'm impressed he's actually doing a decent job of this. Yes, I do sound surprised. I didn't think he would. I thought the hired help would find a way to really mess this up. Apparently not. Colour me surprised. I'm genuinely impressed that this is working as well as it is. So what I think that we will do is we will quickly oops quickly jump to this because I want to have that one come out so that he'll keep going but I don't think he's going to get all the way back down to the other side. So I want to come out there and I need that to come out before it gets to the end. Yes, there we go. Right. Because he's got like 80%. There. So we'll take that lot. Then the combine can go on and do what it needs to do. We will run this down... No, we don't need to run this down just yet. We can afford to wait for one more load. There. Right, so it's four and a half thousand in there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to bring this tractor back uh, like that. And that one's going to stop there a minute. I'm going to shut that one off. This tractor right here... This tractor in real life would be a miserable tractor to go and do this job here with. It would be absolutely miserable and appalling because of the dust that this would generate. It would be terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Um, although, saying that, um, I have done a fair share of bailing with a tractor without air conditioning, so you have the windows open. Um, you just hope for a windy day because if you've got, if you've at least got a bit of a breeze, you can usually try and work things so that you're not in too much dust too much of the time. Um, but it is, it's, it's still, it's, it's not a great job. Doing this kind of thing, you really do want to have a more modern, like, it's nice enough doing it in an older tractor, but I generally would want to do this in a more modern vehicle because to be quite honest um doing this job in an old vehicle where you're getting at you're just in a cloud of dust and you're breathing it in it's it's not the best it's absolutely not the best it's not the best for you either so it's not a healthy thing to go and do to be working in that cloud of dust like you you, you do you, yeah, you should probably be wearing a dust mask while you're doing something like that, but it's not generally the sort of thing you don't want to be wrapped up in a dust mask in the height of summer. Like, it's it, it's brutally uncomfortable doing something like that. So, again, like, you, you, you're kind of, like, leaning towards not doing the sensible option. So I'm going to do that. The wheat is on 46%. Remember, he's doing the very, very long runs on the field. So he's literally only done one pass on the field. And he's already half full. So I'm going to go over to the corner over here. Right, I think we can just afford to take that noise level up a little bit. Because I do genuinely prefer having at least a little bit more vehicle volume. I did have it on 50%, I think. So we'll go here. Yeah. Now we've got a bit more vehicle volume going on. And this is where we switch over the other tractor, and we end up getting absolutely deafened by that combine. We'll do that in a second. So I'm bring you around to that point. I'm just going to shut you off there a second. Go to this one. And we'll go racing down to that combine. So we will dump everything we get from that combine in here. I'm actually going to start speeding time up a little bit. We're going to go to five times speed. We know that we've got rain coming later in the day. But other than that, like we don't have any major concerns for things. And turning around that corner there was a little bit difficult. And there's the noise. If you were driving that combine in real life, you would probably want to have ear defenders on. And I've seen people, I've seen videos of people doing this job, and yeah, they do wear ear defenders when they're doing it. 
Um, and there's a reason for that. These things, they... This is why, you know, I'm, I'm not complaining too much about this combine. I don't think that the, the mod is actually unrealistic in the noise level that is being depicted. It is a very loud, clanky machine. It really is. It, it makes an absolute ton of racket. All right, we want to be careful coming down here because we've got rollers in the long grass. They're hidden down there. And we've also got to be careful because our tractor is struggling to sort of put the brakes on there a little bit. Alright, so you've got to come across the front of the slope. There's the eggs being in the pallet, uh, the pallet collection point. So i got to come down this way. Like this. I love this trailer. It must be said, I do love this trailer. I love the, the, just the look of it. I think this trailer looks amazing. <laughs> I think we're going to have to re... <laughs> I think we're going to have to redesign this. We're not getting up there. Look at that. We need... we. What we need is weights on the, the rear wheels. That ain't happening. That ain't happening. Not at all. Alright. Let's bring you down there a minute. And I'll go here. Construction landscaping I'm gonna have to go with that right how are we gonna do this Actually, we're gonna have to go there a bit I think and just lift that first lift some of this out that way and then I'm gonna have to go with that one because I need to lift the level there a little bit So that I've got that raised area by the food trigger. That's got to come up a bit. So I'm actually going to need to raise this area back here a bit as well. There. Right. Raise some of this. Raise it all the way out over there. It's, oop, nope, I don't want to do that that one. That's what we need to do now. So then I can flatten that back down again and now we make that a bit bigger and we blend. we will do the blending now. So then we kind of blend that in a bit. So what we're essentially doing very careful of that bit there. I want to just blend this slope here. Alright, let's see if that makes any difference. I think I'm going to have to pay out to get weights. Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.